today on Six Sisters Stuff, I'm showing you how to make your whole entire Thanksgiving dinner in the Instant Pot. So my name is Kristen Hills and my sisters and I, we love sharing simple, easy recipes with you. We especially love sharing Instant Pot recipes with you. So we decided we're going to do a huge giveaway for one of you. This is the biggest giveaway we've ever done. We're going to give away a year's worth of groceries. So how you enter is you have to watch this video all the way through and then the next two Sundays there'll be some videos so you have to watch all three videos, do what I tell you to do on the videos and that's how you enter. So watch this video all the way through. In the middle somewhere I'll be sharing how to enter on this video. All right, let's start making your entire Thanksgiving dinner in just the Instant Pot. The first recipe I'm gonna make is our delicious, creamy mashed potatoes. Now, I love making mashed potatoes in the Instant Pot. I don't make them on the stovetop or anywhere else anymore because the Instant Pot is amazing at mashed potatoes. So, I'll show you how I do it. So, first you're gonna take about six russet potatoes and you're just gonna pour them into the bottom of your Instant Pot. Now, if you noticed, I left my skin on. You can take your skin off or leave it on. It doesn't matter. All right, pour those in the bottom. Then you're just gonna add a cup of water right on top of the potatoes. And that's all you have to do right now. So we're gonna put the lid on your Instant Pot. Make sure that this little knob is turned to sealing, not venting. Now you're gonna come over here. You're gonna push either the pressure cook button or the manual button. And because the potatoes are all cut up, we only have to go to 10 minutes. So you're gonna set the timer, then you can just walk away. As soon as the timer is done on your Instant Pot, you're going to go ahead and push this little knob to venting because you want all the pressure out of the Instant Pot. Here we go. Woo! Once all the pressure's out, you can go ahead and safely open your lid. Now the potatoes are all cooked through. Now there is a little bit of water on the bottom, so you can go ahead and drain the water. Um, I'm gonna drain mine just because I don't want liquidy mashed potatoes. Okay, once it is all drained, now it's time for the fun part. We're gonna add the seasonings and mash it. So we're gonna add about a fourth cup of sour cream. Throw that right on top. And your potatoes are so hot, all this is gonna melt together nicely. And then about three tablespoons of butter. Now you can cut this up if you want to. I'm just gonna throw it on in. And then a fourth a cup of milk, just pour it right on top. Then we have a half teaspoon of salt, a half teaspoon of pepper, and a half teaspoon of Italian seasoning. We're gonna spread that all around too. Now it's time for the mashing. Now you can use beaters if you want nice and creamy, but I kinda like my potatoes a little bit chunky, so I'm just gonna use a potato masher. Just gonna sit here for a second and just mash it all together. Okay, now it's time to serve. The good thing about making an Instant Pot, like I said before, you can just put the lid on and wait until Thanksgiving dinner is all ready, then you can just, it will be all ready to go. So I love, love mashed potatoes in the Instant Pot. And look how creamy it is with the sour cream and the butter, it just makes it super creamy. And if you don't like the skins, like I said, take them off, but I love potato skins. Love them, love them. All right, you guys, this one, super easy. Now, we're all done with it, let's move on to the next one. All right, the next recipe is apple, onion, and celery stuffing. Now this one I love because you're just gonna dump everything in the bowl, mix it around, and cook it. So we're gonna start with six cups of seasoned stuffing. Now you can, there's all kinds of seasoned stuffing. Just pick your favorite one. It really doesn't matter that much. Next, we're gonna add about a half a cup of butter. I've melted this butter and we're just gonna pour it right on top. Okay, so we're just gonna do two cups of chicken broth and just pour it right on top. Okay, we're gonna mix this around a little bit. Make sure you get all the stuffing nice and wet. Boop. Now it's time to add the other stuff. Now this is what makes the recipe. It's one tablespoon of poultry seasoning. Mm, it smells so good. So we're just going to 
put that on top. Even though your stuffing already has seasoning, this will make it taste so good. Then we have two Honeycrisp apples. We're just going to pour in. We have one onion here we'll just dump on in. And then some celery, depending on if you like celery or not, you can add this. I have about three stalks here. Okay, now move that a little. We have to mix carefully, very carefully. <laughs> All right, once it's mixed and well combined, make sure everything just has a little bit of seasoning on it, a little bit of liquid in it, we're good. Okay, I'm gonna scooch this stuff over. Now it's time for the Instant Pot. So we're gonna throw this, <laughs> sorry, right there. Now we have a little trivet in here. We're going to put that down and we're gonna add just a cup of water to the bottom of the Instant Pot. Now I have these double stacking pans. If you have a really tall pan that will fit in your Instant Pot, you can use that too. But today I'm gonna to use the double stack just to show you how it works. So a recipe like this is called a pot in pot recipe. You can cook all kinds of recipes with using an extra pot in your Instant Pot. So whew, I'm just gonna pour that in very carefully. We're gonna fill one, there we go. And we're going to stack the pan right on top of it and we'll fill the other one. All right, there we go, looks good. Okay, now we're gonna get some foil because we don't want any more liquid into the stuffing. So we're gonna put foil on it and hopefully try and seal out as much liquid as we can when it pressurizes. Okay. Seal that in. Okay, I'm gonna take my trivet. We're actually going to just put it right on top of the trivet and lower it down. There we go. Sometimes the foil will come up there we go. Okay, we have our water in there, our food in there, we're ready to cook. So we're gonna put the lid on. You wanna make sure this little knob is turned to sealing, not venting. Then we're gonna push the pressure cook button or manual, depending on what you have. And we're going to cook it for 15 minutes. So as soon as you set the timer, you can just walk away and let it cook. So when the timer is all done, you're gonna turn the little knob to venting and let out all the pressure. So once all the pressure's out, you can safely open your lid. There we go. So we're gonna carefully take off the foil, make sure it's cooked. Oh yeah, it's cooked. Okay, the only thing with the Instant Pot is that you're not gonna have that, the brown stuffing on top. It's gonna to be more of a softer stuffing. So if you want to, you can broil this in the oven for about a minute or two, or you can just eat it just like this, which I like it a little softer. So we're gonna pull it out. Whoop, one at a time. So there's one. There we go. Whoop. Perfect, I also like these double stacking because then you can have one stuffing at one side of the table and another stuffing at the other side. So put these down just like that and we'll dish it on up for you guys. Oh, I love stuffing. I think this might be my favorite thing with Thanksgiving is stuffing. All right, you guys, easy, easy stuffing. Now done with this one, let's move on to the next. So we're gonna show you how to make a sweet potato casserole using the Instant Pot. All right, okay. should we get started? Yep, totally. So we have three huge sweet potatoes. <laughs> the recipe calls for six, but it depends on the size. I would say six small sweet potatoes. Yeah, they wouldn't, if there were six of these, they wouldn't fit They wouldn't in there. fit. So we have three large sweet potatoes that we're gonna use. <laughs> now, when you cook them in the Instant Pot, you can cook small potatoes for 18 minutes. Yeah. You can cook medium-sized potatoes for 22 minutes or large potatoes for 27 minutes. We'll put that in the, oh, below so that you can yeah. remember that. But well, really fast with that one, so whether you cook 
one small potato, it yeah. will still cook for the 18 minutes. Yeah. Or if you use 10 small potatoes, it will still only cook for the 18 minutes. So yeah. depending how many you have, it's different than how big they are, if that yeah. makes any sense. Totally. So we were talking that we think in order to shorten our time, we're gonna cut these in half. Yes. Just yes. to make them cook a little bit faster. So Let's we're see. making them into medium potatoes yes. instead of the extra large. So potatoes are hard. Okay, so in the Instant Pot, we put a cup of water in, because you, of course, always need liquid. Then we put the little trivet in. Now there's different kinds of trivets. Whatever your Instant Pot came with, you can use one of those. So we're just gonna put the trivet in, and then we're ready for the sweet potatoes. They're just gonna go right on top of the yep. trivet. So all that we did was wash them. We didn't peel them because after you cook them in the Instant Pot, they are so easy to peel. They just peel right off. So get them all in there. You're gonna have to squish them in. It's okay if you have to stack them, yep, right? Yep, stacking's Kay. fine. Now, if you weren't gonna use the Instant Pot or if you didn't have one, yeah. you can make these on the stovetop and mm -hmm. boil the water, but you just wanna make sure you peel the potatoes and then chop, the, chop them up into cubes and then just cook them until they're soft. Soft, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, we're just ready to put the lid on. So we wanna make sure that you get that little noise and you turn it all the way. It should be able to seal just like that. Then you're gonna turn this little knob to sealing. Okay. Make sure it's not on venting or it won't pressurize. Kristen's taught us all how to use our instant <laughs> pots. We were all terrified of them. I secretly she love them. She was the one who was like, you guys, they're not scary. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so then we're gonna use the pressure cook button or if you have the other kind of instant pot, it has a manual button, it's the same thing. So pressure cook and manual, same button. You just wanna make sure that it pressurizes. Okay, so after you push the pressure cook button, you're gonna go down, what did we decide to do? Uh, 22. 22, since we did, made them we into- made them medium Medium sized. potatoes. Yep. So after you set the timer, you're just gonna let it sit there for a minute, and after a few seconds, yep. it will beep at you and have the beautiful on button. There we go. I was always so confused at this point when I was first using my Instant Pot, because I'm like, I don't want it to be on. Now, I want now to now cook you. I need it to say, warming up. Yes. Coming to pressure. <laughs> so now it I tell is. people. You just don't know. Once you see the on, you can walk You're away. Good. Walk You're away. good to go. All right, we'll let this cook. So once the timer is done, you'll notice there's a little L. That means that it's done cooking, the timer has gone off, and now it's gonna start counting up. So right now we're at a four, which is totally fine. We're gonna do this little knob over to ceiling. Get ready. Woo. Ooh, it's just, there we go. That's why people get scared. Because it explodes on them. So real fast. Real fast. If you're nervous to do it with your finger, you can always use a spoon to do it so you won't be afraid when it comes. But I can just use my fingers too. What about, can you throw a towel over it? Okay. Instant Pot says don't throw a towel over it. But I do throw a towel okay, over it. So when, I. when it starts to like, when you have something yeah, yes, that's, that's starchy, then I throw a paper towel over it so I can just throw it away when I'm done. Yeah. Just so it doesn't spray all over my kitchen. But they said they don't want you to do it because the food can go back in that little knob and it can kind of mess up the inside, so. Maybe that's why mine. <laughs> so if it does, if it starts to spew, just let it release on its own. That's that was my best advice. If okay. it starts to spew, just let, let it do its thing. All right. All right, so right now we're just waiting for this little tiny knob to go down. That means the pressure's out and you can open your lid. And usually I'll hear it, like it. Yeah, you can hear a little. Makes a little clink. Yep. Yep. And of course the air will start, yeah. stop coming out. Oh, there it is. All right, went down, now we're gonna open it. Okay, just beware, when you open it, it's really steamy, so just watch so your hands. So if you want an at-home spa experience, go in. <laughs> just you can smell the sweet potatoes. All right, we're gonna pull the potatoes right out. Now, like we said before, they literally come right out. Because we are making the sweet potato casserole, this is the perfect way to do it because they are, I mean, we look at this. We want them to be mushy. Falling yep. apart. Yep, so. they're so soft and it's easy to get off. Yeah, I hate peeling sweet potatoes. This is so easy. Okay, so I'm gonna take the skins off and then I'm gonna put them in the bowl. Okay. I'll let you mash. I'll mash, get my workout Okay, now these are really hot because we literally just took them out. But, um, actually. <laughs> What's the best way to do this? You don't even have to peel them. I know, they just come they right themselves. out. And look, you can just like scrape it off of the peel. And you peel. know what? I bet mashing is just gonna be A breeze. super simple. Exactly. Yep. If you don't have one of these potato mashers, I love them. 
I do too. I use it for a lot of things besides just potatoes. When I make jam, I'll do this. Oh, or if I have to mash idea. a banana for banana bread, I'll do that. That's good. Okay. So there's our potatoes. They're all mashed. <laughs> Super good. Fastest mashing ever. It really was. So now we're going to add all the ingredients to make it into the yummy casserole. Nice. Do you want to spray that yes, pan? Yes, I will. So, so 9 by 13 pan. Yeah. That one's a little bit smaller, but it will work. Yep. So I've got 3 quarters cup of sugar. That's how you know this is going to be good. Mm -hmm. And then we're also going to do 2 eggs. So we just crack them and beat them. Nice. Before you add them in. That'll be a little easier to yep. mix in. And then we're also going to add in, I believe, a one teaspoon, teaspoon of there we vanilla. Go. I love vanilla. Me too. I love sweet potato casserole because it's sweet, but it is a little bit savory. I and agree. We're going to add in a half teaspoon of salt. Nice. Growing up, I was always so confused why, like, our mom added salt to cookies and other things. Right. But you can tell the difference when the salt's not there. It needs that so that you get that flavor depth. Exactly. Okay. Is there anything else that goes in here? Oh, the butter. Half nice. cup of butter. Okay. And we melted this butter. Yep. Melted so it'll it just before. Make it super easy. So now we just need a big spoon. Okay. Give this a good stir. Mix it all together. Nice. Oh, this is like one of the favorite things. I know. One of my favorite things to have on Thanksgiving. Same. So using the Instant Pot for Thanksgiving will not only save you room like on your stovetop and other things, but it will just make things go a little bit faster. I hate on Thanksgiving Day if you're stuck in your kitchen <laughs> all day. And if you only have one oven and like, oh, like you just, that's where the turkey not needs enough to be. So, yeah. There we go. I know, between my Instant Pot and my slow cooker and my oven and my stovetop, like I'm using all of them. And kind of cooking everything at the same time. Yep. Ready for the topping. Okay, so to start out, we're gonna do a third cup of just some white flour. Okay, then we're gonna do one cup of brown sugar. Next thing we're gonna add is just some chopped pecans. About a cup, give or take, just as much as you want. Nice. Okay, so and this is in. one cup One cup brown, brown sugar. sugar. Okay. And Ooh. the last thing is just three tablespoons of melted butter. Mix that all together, do you want me to mix it? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, now it's not gonna be like super liquidy. We want this to be more of like a crumble a topping crumble. that goes on top. And when it bakes, it will be a little bit hardened, yeah. but that's what Kinda makes it good. Kind of gives it like that candy coating, right. the best part. Exactly. Everybody fights over the topping. I know. <laughs> and now if you really want like, more topping, you can double yeah, it if you, you want. you could double this. But I feel like this totally is could. a good amount. Yeah, it's good. I agree. So you see how it's kind of coming together nice and crumbly, and then I just kind of sprinkle this on the top. Okay. I don't really with pour it on. With spoon or with your fingers? I what do you do? I just use my fingers just nice. because I feel like when I pour it on out of the bowl, it's never quite even. Okay. So we could both do this. There you go. We'll put it right in the middle. Yep. Just kind of sprinkle it okay. all over the top. Try to get it all the way covered. Okay. Okay. Ready? This is ready. Yep. Kay. Put it in the oven. Kay. 350 degrees for 30 minutes. Okay. Okay, so 30 minutes and this is baked to perfection. Oh man. I wish you could smell the house right now. <laughs> I know. It's like Thanksgiving cinnamony warm, all the good things. My husband's gonna be excited. I know, this is really one of our favorite dishes. So this is ready. You could keep it in the oven warm until you're ready to serve Thanksgiving dinner. Yep. Um, you could also make it ahead and reheat it before Thanksgiving. Or even before you cook it, put it in your refrigerator. Yeah. Pull it out when you're ready for it. Yep, cook it when you're ready. Yep, the topping is seriously to die for, but then look how good and fluffy the sweet potatoes look. It looks so it good. It really is. All right, the next recipe is a simple Instant Pot cranberry sauce. Now I love this because there's hardly any ingredients, but it can just sit in your Instant Pot until your Thanksgiving dinner is ready. So first we're gonna start with some fresh cranberries. I just need to go rinse them really fast. All right, once they're all rinsed, you're just going to pour them into the bottom of your Instant Pot. Now, this is important. You have to do special steps when you are making this because we don't want the burn notice. So next, we're gonna add about 3 fourths cup of orange juice, and I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it. Maybe even a cup will work just fine too. There, we're almost there. There we go. Then we're gonna add just a little bit of water just so we can have a little bit more liquid because we, again, we don't want it to burn. So this is about a fourth a cup of water we're just adding to it. Then you're going to very carefully just pour one cup of sugar on top of the cranberries. We don't want it to absorb all of 
the liquid because we need the liquid to pressurize. So that's all there is to it. We're gonna go ahead and put the lid on. Make sure this little knob is turned to sealing, not venting. Then we're gonna push the pressure cook or manual button and we're gonna go all the way down to just seven minutes. Good, once you set your timer, you can just walk away. The cranberries are all done cooking, so now we're just gonna turn this little knob to venting to let all the pressure out. All right, once all the pressure's out, you can go ahead and lift up your lid. Ooh, you see those bubbles on there, nice. Oh man, it smells good, it looks good. Okay, I'm just getting like a little masher. We're gonna mash just a little bit of the berries. Depending how you like your cranberry sauce, if you like the thick or the big berries, go ahead and leave them there, but we're gonna mash it just a little bit. You can also stick it through a blender and then cool it and it would be amazing. All right, we're gonna dish some of this out so you guys can see it. We're gonna leave it nice and chunky here for you. Now once it cools, it will thicken up a little bit like it just like this. All right, there you go. Okay, we're done with this one. Let's move on to the next recipe. All right, quick break. It is giveaway time. So how to enter in this video is first, you need to go down below in the description. We need your email. That's how we're going to announce to you that you won. So there'll be a little link right down below in the description. Put your email in there, that simple. Then you're gonna go to the YouTube comments. You're going to use the hashtag sisterhood. And then you're gonna tell me about your family traditions that you have on Thanksgiving, whether it's a recipe, whether it's something fun you do with your family, or if you don't have any traditions, you can just say, I don't have any traditions. That will work too. So we want your email and your favorite tradition down below. That's where you find it. That's how you enter. All right, on with the recipes. All right, the next recipe is our brown sugar and bacon green beans. Now, I love this because there's so many different flavors and it's a little bit different than just green beans and butter. So, let's get started. Now, you can either use fresh green beans or frozen. Right now, there wasn't a lot of fresh in my grocery store, so make sure if they don't have fresh, go check out the frozen. They usually have quite a bit there. So, I'm just gonna put in two bags of green beans. Then we're gonna just take one cup of water, pour it right on top, and that's all you have to do right now. So we're gonna put the lid on your Instant Pot. Make sure the little knob's to ceiling, not venting. <gasps> then we're gonna push the pressure cook button, and I love doing green beans because it only has to cook for about anywhere from zero to about two minutes. So I'm gonna do one minute, just let it sit there, and then you can walk away. Now when your Instant Pot is all done cooking, you're gonna turn this little knob to venting and let all the pressure out so you can safely open the lid. Beans are cooked all the way through. Now we're gonna drain the liquid and then add awesome seasoning. So give me just one second. Okay, they're all nice and drained. Now it's time to add a little bit of seasoning. So we're gonna add a fourth cup of butter and I cut up a little bit just so it will melt a little faster. The beans are so hot that It'll melt, it'll melt. We're gonna just mix this around a little bit while we get everything else in. There we go. Okay. Now we're gonna add just a fourth of a teaspoon of garlic salt. We just want a little bit of salt, not a ton. And then we're gonna add a fourth cup of brown sugar. Just sprinkle it right on top. And mix this around just for a second. Make that brown sugar caramelize a little bit. And now we're just gonna put on the bacon. So this is six strips of bacon that we've cooked and cut up. We'll just put it right on top. And then just mix that around. All right, the nice thing about this recipe is that you can keep it on, keep warm, put the lid on and just let it sit in your Instant Pot until Thanksgiving is ready to be served. But for now, I'll just show you how delicious this looks. All right, there you have it. Brown sugar and bacon, green beans. All right, done with this one, let's move on to the next. So you can do a few things with this. So you can 
um, saute your turkey breast, but we're not gonna do that today. So the only thing about the Instant Pot is that you don't get that nice brown crispness to your turkey. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? So you can saute your turkey, but for us, we're just feeding our family, so yeah. I really don't care about the, the crispiness of the skin. Yeah. So we're just gonna put it right in the My kids pot. are weird about stuff looking burned, so if it's <laughs> seared on the outside, they're like, why is it black? Why is it burned? So we're just going the juicy route. Perfect, let's do it. Okay, so we're gonna make a seasoning mixture to go on our turkey breast, and I'm starting with a tablespoon of olive oil. Now we do the olive oil so it will make the spices stick to the turkey. Okay, and then Kristen, Oh my Introduce gosh. me to these. I love these things. They're the magnetic ones. If you haven't seen them, I'll, I'll link them down below for you guys. And then we're just doing a tablespoon of smoked paprika. Now if you don't have smoked paprika, you can just use the normal paprika. And then we've got, sorry, butterfingers here. Two teaspoons of ground black pepper, and then a teaspoon of salt. And if you don't want all these spices, you can kind of make your own turkey. Yeah, you could substitute. If you're worried about the paprika, you could always switch that out for thyme or something savory. Perfect. Um, a table, oh sorry, teaspoon of Italian seasoning. Nice. I always like to add a little bit more of Italian seasoning. Okay, should I open yeah, this? Open <laughs> We're going for it today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the dump oh, there you go. Let's do two teaspoons of Italian seasoning. Yeah. And then a teaspoon of minced garlic. Now, if you don't have the minced garlic, I like to use that kind because you can just keep it in your refrigerator and you always have garlic on hand so you don't have to use the press every time, you know? Yes. All right, so we're just mixing this up. Oh, it smells so good. It smells like Thanksgiving. Yeah. Okay, are you ready? So, how I did this before, I will be the one touching the turkey, sorry. Hey, I'll, that's fine with me. <laughs> okay. So now this turkey breast comes with strings attached. Now you can keep it like that and just do the seasoning around that. But I like to season all the pieces of the turkey breast. So we cut it open and we're just gonna season um, on both sides. Just lightly rub around all the this. turkey. Go for it. Really getting in there. Mm -hmm. My first year of marriage, I thought I was gonna impress my husband and make a full size turkey. He got one through his work. Oh no. And it fell on the ground, it slipped out of my hands, and like the, all the stuff, the gizzards or whatever you deal with, yeah, yeah. it's like, I'm never doing this again. And I ended up crying, and we went and got a hamburger. So, happy Thanksgiving. This is our kind of turkey. No bones, nothing. Right. None of the, the lovely stuff. Right. The, the and it's not gonna cook gizzards. for like hours and hours and hours. No, so actually how the turkey cooks is, we usually say about six to eight minutes per pound. So this is three pounds. So I like to go more on the, the longer side. So we're gonna do 24 minutes just with this. So we're actually gonna just stick it right into the bottom of the Instant Pot. So if you were searing the outside of this, would you sear it before you did the so you would spices. add a little bit more oil on the bottom and sear it with the spices. Okay. But because we're not, we're just gonna go this. Okay, so once we have the turkey in the bottom, and you always wanna make sure when you're cooking meat in the Instant Pot, the meat goes on the bottom because okay. it will cook better that way. So we're gonna just add about a half a cup to a cup. I like to add a cup just in case. We just want it to pressurize She's all the way. She's pouring it really carefully so the seasoning's not I want not my seasoning off. to still stay on my turkey. But the good thing is with the Instant Pot, because it pressurizes all the water and seasonings will kind of all mix together while it's cooking. So it will still taste good. Okay. All right, I think we're ready. So we're gonna put the lid on. Flip this around a little bit. Now this is, so this is the Instant Pot Lux. So the knob's a little bit different. So we're gonna turn this little knob to ceiling. And then it says it has a manual button. So the manual button and the pressure cook button are the same thing. So you wanna push your manual button, then you're gonna push your plus button. So we're going up to about 24 or 25 minutes and we're gonna let it sit there. So you're gonna wait just a few seconds and then, so after a few seconds, it's gonna beep and say on. That means you're doing it right. So now you just get to walk away while your turkey cooks. Okay, so we have been letting this release on its own for about 15 minutes and then we're gonna turn the little knob to venting to get out the rest of the pressure. Oh, we're good. <laughs> Love when that happens. Okay, then we're gonna just pull it right up. Oh my word, can you guys see this? Oh yeah, it looks so good. It, it smells, smells good. so good. Okay, so the secret in making 
turkey breast is that once it's done cooking, you're gonna put it on a plate, then you're gonna let it rest for about 10, 15 minutes with some foil over top. So that's what we're gonna do. Pull this out very gently. Oh, can you guys see that? Oh yeah. There we go. Oh good, you got some foil. I feel bad saying this, but I've never been a turkey person. Like Thanksgiving turkey. This might change your mind. I know, <laughs> but this has got me convinced like it's With falling the apart. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, so go ahead and put the foil on. We're gonna let it sit there for like 10-15 minutes or so. Okay, all right, I think we're ready. Okay. Oh man, that looks so good. Okay, so usually we'll have this all nice and plattered and <laughs> cut pretty, but I just wanna show you the inside of it here, of just how juicy and good it is. Now don't forget to watch the next two Sundays. They're going to be amazing Thanksgiving recipes just for you guys, and that's how you enter to win a year's worth of groceries. All right guys, I hope you like this video. We'll see you next Sunday. Bye.